Palindrome is a word that looks the same from both ends. It's basically the word equivalent of your mum. <laughs> <laughs> John shoots all his clocks fast, so he's never late. And it works. Of course, the other reason John is never late is because John is never invited. <laughs> I was invited here. Mm, you keep turning up. <laughs> In entomological terms, the name Jonathan means God has given him, and Ross means a tongue too big for his mouth. <laughs> Rasheen's from a large Irish family, so every time she plays a gig, she takes the roof off and sells the lead to her uncle. <laughs> a person who illegally exports sheep is called an owler, unless you're from Wales, in which case, you're a sex trafficker. <laughs> Round of applause, you genius. <laughs> Stand-up comedian, writer, radio host, is there anything John can't do? Yes, he can't leave the house without checking the gases off 15 times. <laughs> John's girlfriend's been with him for nearly a year, and if John's girlfriend is watching, there'll be a helpline number up on the screen at the end of the show. <laughs> what a shame, Jimmy, you delivered those perfectly, but it's been over a year and I have an electric hob. <laughs> John has a habit of meticulously organising the coins in his trouser pocket according to size, is what he told the arresting officer. <laughs> do you do that? What, wank outside or order my <laughs> coins? Do you order your coins? Uh, yeah, I do. I think everyone It's just that. fun, though, isn't it? <laughs> it's just fun. <laughs> World Maths Day is celebrated on the 6th of March by literally no one. <laughs> Fans of Bill Bailey can make their own model of him at home by simply taking a boiled egg and rolling it in cat hair. <laughs> That's the one I made earlier. <laughs> What's up? What's up, little Bill? <laughs> yes, I know, he hates you. But don't worry, I like you. Hey, you. This is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take this around. When I go on tour, when I go in the morning in the hotels, and they go, how would you like your eggs, sir? I'm going, like this! <laughs> <laughs> Josh is five foot six, has curly hair, and is from a leafy shire. I'm not saying he's a hobbit, but after the show, him and Bill have got to rush off and throw an evil ring into a volcano. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> John has been going out with his girlfriend for over 12 months, and to mark their first anniversary, her friends and family released a special video message pleading for her safe return. <laughs> Before Joey agreed to be in Dictionary Corner, he only had two questions. What's a dictionary and what's a corner? <laughs> a corner? A corner, yeah. A corner? Yeah. Well, like a triangle. <laughs> Like a triangle, you know, corners, triangles. Yeah, three so, corners, isn't it? Th it's what, sorry? It's got three corners, isn't it? <laughs> Kathy recently appeared on a Gogglebox celebrity special, sitting round on a sofa, getting pissed, shouting at the telly, and then Gogglebox rang and asked her to do a celebrity special. <laughs> Sean is a pessimist. In his world, the glass is very much half empty and also smashed and being used to threaten someone who looked at him funny. <laughs> Rosheen Connerty's been on the show before. I'm not saying she's terrible at spelling, but her actual name is Rosie Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> John should try his hand on the X Factor. He can't sing or dance, but if you're looking for tragic backstory, he's world class. <laughs> well, I can sing and dance, actually. I just keep that very well hidden. <laughs> Let's have some song and dance. Come on, break it out. Uh... <laughs> And I think that'll do. <laughs> it's important to always leave them wanting less. <laughs> OK. I shouldn't be mean. John was actually bullied at school, and to this day, he still washes his face in a flushing toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the bigger boys are laughing at you. <laughs> I'm not saying Ramesh is pessimistic, but for one night only, Sean Locke is going to be known as the fun one. <laughs> Ramesh is a vegan and has three children. His kids are delighted that he's on the show tonight because it means they can finally go to McDonald's. <laughs> you don't look like a vegan. What do you mean? You just don't look like one, aren't you? I don't what do you think they look like? I don't know, have a poncho on, maybe? <laughs> 
Look, why would a vegan want a poncho more than anyone else? What's... I don't know. It's just one of those casual, lazy stereotypes that I've built up over the many years I've been doing this job. <laughs> Feels to me what you're saying is that a vegan would be like a weedy, sort of small, meek little... F sort of like John. <laughs> Um, our resident lexicographer, Susie, lived in New York for two years. They say New York is the city that never sleeps. Well, it did when Susie was there, <laughs> talking about lexicography. <laughs> <laughs> Comedian Bill Bailey was first discovered in 1984, at the end of a rainbow sitting on a pot of gold. <laughs> Rachel Riley appeared on Strictly, where she proved she's not only nearly as clever as Stephen Hawking, she's almost as good at dancing. <laughs> Before she became a stand-up, Sarah used to work in the Job Centre in South Shields. Seems a bit pointless having a Job Centre in South Shields. It's like opening a library in Essex. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel is a mathematician with a background in quantum theory, fluid mechanics and a remarkable aptitude for mental arithmetic, which is all well and good, but can you do this? <laughs> Come on, with your maths degree. Come on. Strangely arousing. <laughs> it's written a play called I Can't Sleep, which is not a problem you'll have if you go and see it. <laughs> My goodness. It was a kid's show. It was for kids. There was two beds on stage and we were both asleep when the audience came in. And then I woke up and the audience had to tell me how to get back to sleep. And at the end we were asleep and the audience walked out. And on the last time we did it, an eight-year-old, as he walked past, just punched me in the balls. <laughs> Jason's career began collecting glasses at a comedy club. One night, a comic didn't turn up and Jason stepped in to fill the gap. It quickly became apparent that Jason was destined for bigger things and within months, he was collecting glasses in comedy clubs up and down the country. <laughs> John's a lucky man. His girlfriend's brilliant. She's funny, beautiful, intelligent. She looks amazing first thing in the morning. And I love that thing she does with her tongue. <laughs> Matthew's been practising Countdown a lot in the lead-up to the show while he's had a lot of spare time since the Rolf Harris lookalike works dried up. <laughs> just released his first children's book, The Parent Agency, about a nine-year-old who wants to swap his parents for more interesting people. Apparently, David got the idea from his nine-year-old. <laughs> Clever, charismatic and great fun to be around. He's like a human being made from all the bits left over when they made Sean Locke. It's <laughs> quite, quite a divisive thing to say about our team, you know. I'm, try I'm trying to sort of divide and conquer here. You want to conquer our team. <laughs> You're already hosting the show. Give us a chance. We just want to do anagrams. <laughs> uh, David is very particular about the correct use of the English language, and he picks people up on the tiniest mistakes. But surely, David, you're not that pedantics. <laughs> <laughs> I don't pick people up on the tiniest mistakes. I'm not incredibly rude. So you're I saying just... that was a tiny mistake, are you? Uh, I... No, I haven't. I've... The very thing you wanted me to do, I have not done. But yeah, I've said, I've said you pick people up on tiny mistakes and you're now saying you don't pick people up on tiny mistakes, oh, I which see. feels no. like you're picking me up on a tiny mistake. <laughs> no, that's the, a different sort of tiny mistake, isn't it? The tiny mistake you were implying I pick people up on is a, an error in grammar or punctuation, not just a factual error or a slur. <laughs> Get out of that, Jimmy! Yeah. <laughs> You win this time. <laughs> I'm not saying John's boring, but after talking to him, you are warned not to drive or operate heavy machinery. <laughs> it says here in the 80s, Susie collected rocks. And there's me thinking that being the resident lexicographer on Countdown was tragic. <laughs> pet rocks? Don't you remember pet rocks? Well, if you couldn't afford a real pet, you had a pet rock. <laughs> John, I said you were the most boring, but it's bloody close. <laughs> Rod is incredibly popular in Wales. Wherever he goes, people stop what they're doing to say hello. It doesn't matter whether they're having sex with their sister, kissing a sheep, or telling their mum how sexy she looks. <laughs> Everything to say hello to Rod. <laughs> At six foot eight, Greg Davis was born in Wales. He's the biggest thing to come out of Wales. That's it, he's the biggest thing to come out of Wales. <laughs> in his spare time, Greg enjoys listening to music, going to the theatre, and attacking the city of Tokyo. <laughs> I couldn't keep a straight face through that. Sean Locke's bubbly outlook and friendly personality mean he's the life and soul of any fight in a Weatherspoon's car park. <laughs> Sean Locke is one of the finest comedians in the country, a hilarious stand-up and a brilliant all-round guy. <laughs>
Bob used to be a lawyer, but you won't hear him shouting objection, overruled or sustained tonight, because they're all nine-letter words and Bob is crap at counting. <laughs> <laughs> Susie, have you got any pre-show rituals? Uh, well, Rachel and I have um, a Cats Down version of Snog, Marry, Kill for you, John and Sean. <laughs> well, I would like the results, please. Um, well, there's two kills and one snog. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, you've got... Well, it's not marry, kill, you've got a... Uh... I think we're dead, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Countdown captains couldn't be more different. While Sean Locke loves to let his hair down, John is famous for letting his family down. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I love about that is it's massively harsh and just made up. <laughs> <laughs> if this is the start of a new series, I assume the next episode you're just going to say, John's a dick. <laughs> According to his mum. <laughs> Can I? I'll write that down. That'll be very good for the next one. <laughs> Catherine is Canadian, and Canada is famous for its cold winters. In fact, the only place that's been colder over the last 30 years is the other side of John's bed. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy famously played teenage boy Perry in Kevin and Perry Go Large. No one's played a needy, weird, socially awkward teenage boy so well since John Richardson. <laughs> lost his virginity in a restaurant owned by Anthony Worrell Thompson and vowed that next time he'd bring enough money to pay the bill. <laughs> I did laugh at that one. Yeah, but... <laughs> More because that was a joke about Anthony Worrell Thompson than you. <laughs> did you shag Anthony Worrell Thompson? No! <laughs> there, was, there was no shagging of any Worrell Thompsons or any celebrity chefs. It was a happy... Well, she was happy at the beginning. <laughs> Did it, did it go well? No, it was a disaster. <laughs> what, what, what was the... I'm not talking about how well, I lost no. my virginity. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah. It's just kind of what I said on the night. <laughs> John promises to tell you about his when he loses it. 